That means it's not that hard, but there are some nuanced. There are some nuances of know-how. In this case, we're calling this the nuances of volatility, a distributional perspective. I'm not exactly sure where the team's going with this one. <laughs> Me either. Let's take a look. The nuances of volatility, a dis that's an interesting word. Mm -hmm. A distributional perspective. Okay, I like it. Market volatility, the VIX, is a mean reverting asset whose average over the last years, including 2020, <clears throat> is 18.9. I would have guessed it would have been lower than that. If you guessed, if you asked me over the last eight years, which takes us back to 2017, I would have guessed that mm, I would have guessed 18.9 is a little high. I would have said closer to 17. But when we say that the VIX is mean reverting, it's because it's a math equation and it's stocks, futures, which are price based, are not mean reverting because price is not mean reverting. But mm -hmm. when you have some form of an equation like, like volatility, volatility is mean reverting. It gets too high, it goes down, it gets too low, it goes up. Eventually. It's very expensive yep. to hold it. Knowing that it's mean reverting, it's very expensive to hold it until that happens. In fact, I would say it's next to impossible. Um, but at some point, it will go back. Let's go to the next slide. Looking at an average alone can mislead your expectations of how often volatility is at certain levels. In other words, to get a better picture of how volatility behaves, we need to look at its distribution. A distribution will show you that not only the average value, but also the probabilities around all values that volatility can end up with. What's interesting about this is our old research, and this may be updating our old research, our old research used to show that volatility on a distribution basis would go up about 10% of the time, go down about 20% of the time, and stay in a lull state about 70% of the time. Let's see how this latest piece of research lines up with that. So the distribution of all the daily VIX values since 2017 is shown below. Notice the very long right skewed tail, of course. That gives you a good little picture, but let's keep going. Yeah, sure. Because of this large right tail that covers many large values with low probability, the average of 18.7 does not split the values of the distribution evenly. In fact, it is roughly one and a half times as likely for the VIX to be below average on any given day, 60% of the time, than above the average, 40% of the time. That's why you can see that yellow line kind of all the way to the left on this graph. Which, okay, this starts to bring that whole, all that, you know, lull state into, you know, into perspective a little bit more. Let's go to the next slide. That's a really good picture there. The median, the 50th percentile of the VIX, is 16.4. That makes more sense to me. The median, by definition, <laughs> tells us the value where the distributions occurrences are split equally. So that it is much lower. In other words, half the time the VIX is above 16.4 and half the time it's below 16.4. All of this, again, this is the distributional uh, perspective of volatility. It is very nuanced. Let's go to the next slide. The chances of falling into the tail of the distribution, in this case, um, defined by the VIX value greater than 30, is just under 7%. Rarely do we get a VIX over 30 is what that means. Sure. I would have said the number was closer to 5 or 2%, something like that. You know, just I mean, I think over 30, three distribution curve. I think over 35, it's going to be closer to 2 or 3%. But 30% yeah, yeah. 7. 93% yeah. of those are below yeah. that. With the current VIX at 16.1 as of close on Friday, February 7th, we mm -hmm. look into the distribution graph from 2024. And you can see it's not that dramatically different from the other things that we were just talking about. So some of the takeaways here, when looking at an asset like volatility with non-normally distributed prices, it's important to consider values besides just the average. The average tells you the typical value to expect 
when taking into account the magnitude of each value, whereas the median tells us the typical value to expect when taking into account only the number of occurrences, literally the middle value. With normally distributed data sets, no skew, the median and the average are the same. In this case, a little bit different, but, um, oh no, the median average will be the same, yes. No, but, yeah, right. Yep, but yeah, I mean, that's how you get down to that 16 level. That's actually really good. That just shows you that, you know, there, there, there's a pretty low chance the VIX over 30, you know, over time, but, mm -hmm. and there's a high chance of it trading below that 16 level. 